Hi, Dr. Anna. Welcome to the podcast. Great to be here with you. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. So could you start off by telling the listeners a bit about how you came to specialize in women's health? Was that kind of a personal health journey that you went on or has it always been a passion of yours? Really, it's always been a passion. Well, when I was, I knew I wanted to be a doctor from age six, honestly, but then it was pediatrics. But then as I became a young woman, um, I witnessed my mom struggle with diabetes and heart disease. And when I was only 16 and she was 52, I, I, you know, um, I remember walking home from school one day and always she was there cooking in the kitchen. We ate early dinners. And this time I was just about 15 turning 16 and she, the house was empty. The house was empty and it was so lonely. It was because she was undergoing cardiac bypass surgery at that time. She was only 52 and getting bypass surgery. And one thing I recognized at that time and as, as very quickly within the years after as she struggled was that much of the research that physicians based her care on was done on men. And so from that point, I really became a very staunch women's health advocate and also interested in research. A little thing many people don't know about me is that between college and, I mean, between, yeah, college and med school, I worked in research for the U.S. Navy. And since you're in the U.K., I actually presented research in Amsterdam with the Royal Navy as wow. and our U.S. Navy in diving medicine research. So that was my um, experience with your National Health Service and the uh, Navy, the Navy Corps there. It was very fun. I was, um, we actually presented in Amsterdam and had a reception in the zoo in Amsterdam. So that was a great experience for a young woman. I think I was 21 at the time presenting my first research paper. Skill power. <laughs> I tell you, Love right? It. And then from there, I just, I went to gynecology and obstetrics, studied at Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia. And because I was National Health Service Corps, I came to um, this small area in Georgia, southern tip of Georgia, and I've been here ever since. Part of my journey, though, is, has been also not just understanding why my mom had struggled so much between diabetes and cardiovascular disease and how the recommendations she was given back then actually made her sicker. And, um, and she did, she struggled at the time of her death when she was only 67 years old. She had really struggled for many years. And when it came down to it, it was these reversible diseases of inflammation, which I've now been able to reverse in, in you know, patient after patient after patient as, um, as we get to the root causes, which is hormone imbalance and inflammation. And I always say that the conventional health service is amazing for acute care. Like you get hit by a car, I want to be sent to the emergency room. I want all the drugs. I want all of the immediate care and they work wonders. But for some of these chronic lifestyle driven conditions, this is where naturopathic medicine, functional medicine, nutrition, lifestyle really shines. So um, what are some of the things that were recommended to your mum that um, you said could have potentially made things worse? Definitely the American Diabetic uh, mm. Association diet. <laughs> that was one. I mean, you know, I mean, they allow all the fruit she wanted and no, she couldn't have her baked sweets. And that was hard because she was a baker. But um, she, you know, all the, you know, all the carbs and a very high carb diet, which is just poison. And then, of course, the, the snacking option. So it just increases insulin resistance. And, and she, like me, have a warrior body type. And that means that we can go long periods of time without food. We are designed for metabolic efficiency. We are designed to... Um, to survive famine. It's same with the Native Americans, right? They are designed for being warriors and out in uh, doing strenuous activity for long periods of time, and they're metabolically efficient. And, and when we go into menopause, perimenopause and menopause, we become more metabolically efficient. We can survive on less. Now, that's a really good thing if we're not living the you know, American lifestyle or our, our, our or our conventional lifestyle, which is often a, a lot of food, a lot of drink, um, 
a lot of indulgences. And so in, in my journey, Vivian, what really has transpired through my education in women's health, but really my personal journey has brought me to where I am today in understanding from a background, just that unease about how I saw my mom's health decline rapidly and what we need to do to be able to switch it using food as medicine, less, less intervention is better, not more. I mean, at the time of my mother's death, she was on 11 prescription medications. 11, not, not, no two of them were studied in anyone to be used together, right? Mm -hmm. But yet we think, okay, well, this was studied, you know, for three months in a clinical trial and that's fine. But now you add that with another medication and another medication and put them on it long-term, we know that increases our risk for infl inflammatory diseases. It has an impaired effect on our body. Our goal is to stay off medication. And as a surgeon and a physician, my goal is to keep patients off medication and keep them out of surgery and it, get their body to heal itself. And as I've learned and studied and operated for all these years, I've recognized more and more that that is each individual's responsibility to themselves to take control, be the CEO of their health. And it's easy to do. And I write that in my books, The Hormone Fix and Keto Green 16. These are the tools I want everyone to have and every family to use and to really bring this to, um, uh, you know, bring this to the world. Yeah, bring yeah. This to, yeah, spread the word. And once you know this stuff, you just want to tell everyone, don't you? Sometimes it comes across as annoying, like if you're at a dinner party or it's Christmas and you're probably <laughs> around, you're like telling everyone and helping them all with the health advice. And sometimes they're like very resistant. They find you very annoying. But then after a while, like when they see you thriving, they see the work that you're doing. They're like, oh, tell me again about that gluten-free thing that you were talking about five years ago. I'm interested now. And I think you can't push people either into making changes until they're ready. Like it can be frustrating, especially with some of my family members. They have these health complaints. They're um, like kind of frustrated at the skin rashes and things. And I'm telling them what to do. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll try it at some point. But until they're ready to change, you really can't force someone to make those lifestyle changes. I think it's, you're exactly right. We just have to walk the talk, right? We do have to walk the talk. And for each woman, each, each woman, each man, each person listening, that that is what I just emphasize as a, as a single mom raising a family, being the sole wage earner, I emphasize how important it is to get our health optimized. It really is so critically important, especially if we do, we, we're caregivers to our children, maybe to aging parents, our health is so critically important and our children get healthy through us, right? So we create the steps that work for us, they will work for them and for the rest of their life and they'll be appreciative too. So what we can control is that, right? Is our own self is what we can control. And maybe our we ones for a while anyway, but beyond that, we can only set an example and be there to inspire and coach. Now, I'm going to tell you, though, with all that said, Vivian, with my understanding of the research through my life experience, through creating solutions and understanding the science for what works and what doesn't work, especially as we age, especially as we enter the perimenopausal time period, and I call this a period of neuroendocrine vulnerability between ages 35 and 55, we have to get keto green. We have to get keto green on a regular basis to improve our metabolism, to improve our mental state, and to reverse and stave off the diseases of aging that we're seeing in abundance right now, the diabetes, the hypertension, the heart disease, and the cancers, as well as the growing dementia, which is 2.6 times more prevalent in female than male. And that is because by design, honestly, by design, in this perimenopausal time period, we have to shift from using glucose for fuel to using ketones for fuel for brain food and decrease the glucose in our body that insulin sensitivity that results from doing this is game changing for the rest of our life. And we know that improves our immune system. It's, it's associated with a stronger, insulin sensitivity is associated with a stronger immune system. It's associated with 
you know, a healthy mind, healthy body, healthy bones. And it is critical for women as we age. And I just, you know, I just can't shout that enough because it, it, it just changed my life and has changed thousands and thousands of women's lives that I work with. Yeah. So tell us like, who is the person who needs to, is it everyone, like any woman who's listening to this, they need to consider trying this out or is there a particular person, um, maybe a a working busy mom with um, a lot going on and she's struggling with some health issues. So tell us exactly what is the Keto Green approach and what are the main problems that you hear people or women um, complaining about these days? Yes. Well, definitely clients coming in, even at younger, younger and younger ages. I have, my oldest daughter is 31. And so, you know, I hear her talking about her friends and now her friends are coming to her because, you know, she's been doing the keto green approach and she has done, she's been thriving and she's feeling better. And it's a whole mind body approach as well. It's nourishing our body and it's nourishing our mind and our soul and our spirit in this approach. So with the keto green approach, when, when, well, when women are coming in to see me or coming in to consult with me virtually in my online programs, it's, they feel, they feel tired, right? They don't feel like their old self. They also are fearful of, of what will happen in the future if things don't shift and want to be as proactive as possible. So those are many of the reasons that women come, but the symptoms they're coming with are anxiety, depression, mood swings, hot flashes, night sweats, difficulty sleeping, waking up tired. Um, The brain fog is a huge issue, brain fog, memory loss, fears about dementia. And especially if they've seen someone in their family aging um, unwell with memory loss, dementia, Alzheimer's, that's really very, very scary. And um, not to mention all the gynecologic complaints, the irregular bleeding, the breakthrough bleeding. And now because of the stress and trauma in our life right now, with um, the uh, um, pandemic that we're all going through, this COVID-19, we are seeing more menstrual irregularities, more symptoms of anxiety and depression and fear and insomnia. And this, again, more than ever, we need to address these problems because what's happening during this time period when a woman is in her mid um, 30s we're starting to see decline in progesterone the major reproductive hormone that is um, uh, crucial for not just our uterus healthy menstrual cycles it's crucial for brain cognition it's crucial for our bones. There are progesterone and estrogen receptors in our fascia. So as we get older, those aches and pains and athletic tears we get can be largely prevented with um, optimizing our hormones. And so recognizing these things is really, it was really a good first step. And then understanding, okay, well, here are these hormone changes going on what do we need to do? What else is happening? So the symptoms I talked about with the declining progesterone don't just relate to our reproduction. I talked about anxiety, brain fog, memory loss. These are neurologic symptoms as a result of declining hormones. Now, what's fascinating is that during this time period, our brain's ability to use glucose for fuel is also sharply declining. So, well, that makes sense, right? That if you're experience, if your brain's starving for fuel, it, you're going to experience brain fog and memory loss. So then it's a fuel problem. So why is it starving for fuel? I know I'm going off on a tangent, Vivian. Don't no, hesitate. I love, it. I love tangents. Okay. But um, so why is it starving for fuel? It's starving for fuel because glucose utilization in the brain is an estrogen dependent phenomenon. So that just blew my mind. And it really, the curve looks more like a progesterone dependent phenomenon, but we need progesterone to make our hormones. So, so it, could be, it, it, it could be that it just progesterone in the brain hasn't been studied yet significantly for this perimenopausal time period. It has been studied in traumatic brain injury with great success. But um, so what we have to do, we have to shift from using glucose for fuel in the brain to using ketones. Use of ketones for fuel in the brain is not an estrogen-dependent phenomenon. And that's, that's really critical to understand. 
and and with that realization that made um just made so much sense to me because when i was 48 i was experiencing my second menopause wait let me back up a second so at 39 i was diagnosed with early menopause and infertility i was told i would never be able to have another child here i was an obgyn you know one of the leaders in my field and my doctor's bag was empty that led me on a journey around the world looking for answers and as a result, I reversed early menopause and naturally conceived a baby at age 41, delivering a healthy baby girl named Ava Marie. And so that journey taught me to implement world's healing medicine strategies. And I write about this in my first book, The Hormone Fix, and I also say that it takes more than hormones to fix our hormones. And this is, is so true. It's so true. So I... Um, I, you know, and, and so I had this beautiful baby girl after being told I would never be able to have another child after failing cycle after cycle of the highest doses of infertility meds and injections and not having ovarian response after failing conventional treatment, right? So when I, I'm saying these things in a way that I want people to understand, as a physician, when we give a diagnosis, don't take that written in stone. Do not take that written in stone. We can reverse pretty much most diseases of chronic aging. We are not designed to get diabetes, heart disease, Alzheimer's as we age. That is not by design. When we use lifestyle medicine and the, I call it my keto green way, we see huge improvements in a very quick amount of time. And, and that's what it was for me. So I had that experience at 39 and 41 and you know and then having Ava at 41 I implemented these practices into my office and then um, at 48 I was experiencing another um, menopause again I've experienced PTSD and this was kind of PTSD rearing its ugly head um, we had trauma upon trauma in in our family so um, we um, at that time, I was experiencing, at 48, I was experiencing the second menopause, the, the brain fog, the irritability, the mood swings. And here I was a single mom with uh, a couple teenagers at home and a, a young one in elementary school. And um, that, was, that was just a terrible time. But what was worse even was that I was gaining weight rapidly and I was experiencing what many patients experience, like incredible weight gain overnight. And so that led me into doing keto, and which I felt unhealthy very, very quickly. And that made me dig into the research as to why and start checking all my physio physiologic markers. And I realized that the important part was that I was becoming too acidic. And just by design, not designed to exist in that state very well in the perimenopause when hormonal changes are occurring, right? Progesterone, that neuroprotective hormone is low and especially add in some stress, chronic stress that we're experiencing right now. And that's going to drop progesterone even lower. So more brain fog, more irritability, less peace, less calm, and also inefficient brain utilization of glucose. So I shifted that recognizing how important alkalinity is to our body alkalinizers are and testing not guessing by measuring urine ph on a regular basis all throughout the day and incorporating this alkaline approach combined with keto approach created such mental clarity i lost the weight rapidly and it the symptoms of brain fog and memory loss and inability to remember my kids names let alone write a, a blog article you know, it was just, um, it was just transformative. I mean, I tell you, I couldn't, I, I published two books with a major publisher now and have built my business back up from zero. And I couldn't have done this five years ago. I was spiraling down into a dark hole. And that, that's why a long story to say that I am passionate about every woman getting this information in their hand as young and as early as possible. And especially now when our progesterone levels are tanking down because of the chronic cortisol in our lives so it's so like for you you were um your progesterone was already depleted then you had the major stress and trauma so that's just a recipe for 
weight gain, vaginal dryness, brain fog. So these are some of the one the symptoms that I want to delve into a little bit deeper because they do sound like some of the most common symptoms that I hear at least with my clients. Um, but before we do that, how does your approach to keto differ from what people have typically heard about? So I know it's been all the rage these past few years but some people think that it's just meat and butter and cheese and um, bacon on everything every meal so how does your <laughs> approach differ to that because some people find that they get very constipated they gain oh, weight yeah. they feel exhausted they get a terrible keto flu so how does your keto green and alkaline version differ yeah. And most women will find that they hit a wall after a while if they're doing it that way, right? That's the keto dirty way is what I call it, right? That is keto dirty. It definitely gets you into ketosis, but so will starvation. So, um, you know, that's keto dirty. So my way I say, you know, you have to go keto clean, which is keto green. And because what I recognized when I went straight keto and I was eating healthy keto, you know, no, um, not bacon and butter, but just, okay, I, I, I eat bacon. It's true. I do. I love <laughs> some good bacon. But, you know, it was, and always I'm dairy free because I have a dairy sensitivity. So in my, you know, in my journey through keto, I was strictly going keto. I wanted to go very low carb. I've used keto in my patients before with neurologic disorders, as well as in essentially my Canada patients that had um, chronic yeast infections. So I put them on a low, low carb diet. But as I was experiencing this, I recalled my patients coming back into me after I put them on this very strict low carb diet saying, you know, I just don't feel well. I just don't feel well. And that was me. I didn't feel well. I called it going keto crazy. And so I had to understand why, what was happening to my body to make me feel this way because I'm not, I'm not comfortable and at ease, regardless of, uh, of the weight loss or not. And uh, again, you can't be, if you're a single mom, you cannot afford the crazies at all. And I called it going keto crazy. And so I started checking my urine pH In functional medicine. We think of, I think of our urine pH testing as a vital sign. The more alkaline our urine is, the better prognosis for our lifespan, for the rest of our life, our health is for the rest of our life. So what does that mean? So with um, research, scientific research has shown that a higher alkaline urine pH is associated with uh, longevity. It's associated with decreased inflammation. It's associated with decreased diabetes and other metabolic disorder disorders, as well as um, decrease in osteoporosis. So the improvement in urine pH is associated with a couple things. So as I started, as I recognized, like I wasn't feeling well, I checked my urine pH. Everyone can do this. Let me just pause and say, everyone can do this. You can get pH paper at the store. I sell a keto pH urine test strips that I created so that ketone testing and pH testing was on one, pat, one strip. And um, do this uh, testing every time you use the bathroom as you kind of figure out what works for you and what works against you. It's a great discovery tool. And so I started testing my urine pH and I was acidic as the urine test paper would read. And that was an aha moment for me. It was like, oh, no wonder I feel so crappy. My body's obviously inflamed and nutrient deficient and I'm struggling right now. And so I just started adding more of the low carbohydrate alkalinizers because number one, I did not want to start gaining that weight back. You know, I, did, I needed to lose the 20 pounds that I gained overnight without doing anything different. And I told, I have to be honest, when my patients would tell me they were gaining weight overnight in this perimenopausal time period without doing anything different, I had a hard time believing them. But it's true. It does happen. And, and I explain why in my books. But this was happening to me. And so I started checking my urine pH regularly, eating the low carb grains and the cruciferous vegetables for hormonal balance, because I knew I had to uh, support my body's hormone detoxification. And, um, and I, would st I started to get more alkaline and more at ease. But what was really fascinating as I was doing this discovery with urine pH testing, I noticed that the mornings I walked on the beach or I did my gratitude journaling, I was more alkaline all day. That just was so profound to me. So the, our lifestyle, our behavior, our ability to manage cortisol and stress 
is anti-inflammatory and increases urine pH. And that's why it's self-discovery. So my keto green approach includes the low carbohydrate greens, but, and the healthy keto food with intermittent fasting and no snacking. So those are some differences in my plans, but it also includes lifestyle changes to garnish and to garner within us the peace that surpasses all understanding that it talks about in the Bible, the peace that surpasses all understanding. So Vivian, so dramatically during this time, I went from being haggard, stressed, and a mess, essentially, to really um, getting this peace and clarity. And I, and keto green, alkaline pH with my body in ketosis at the same time. On test strips, the ketone pad is red and the pH pad is green. And it feels like Christmas. It's like energized enlightenment. And now that I've worked with thousands of women in my online programs, they express the same thing when they're both in ketosis and alkaline at the same time. It is a major, major shift. So there's people who say, you don't have to do anything different. Your body will regulate pH um, regardless of what you do. There's a tight control. You don't need to do anything else. Same with like liver detoxification. You don't need to do anything. Um, your body will filter toxins. That's what, it's, what, that's what it's designed for. So what would be your answer to those people who think um, like food doesn't really influence things, like pH is just something that your body does on its own? Well, that's great. Yeah. Blood pH. Absolutely. You come into my clinic and you're crashing. I'm going to put a needle in your artery, your radial artery of your wrist and draw out arterial blood gas. Our blood pH, our, our arterial blood pH shifts very slightly and any direction it shifts from its already alkaline state, our homeostasis, we are alkaline at 7.4, 7 being neutral, and, and 7 to 11 being alkaline, 0 to 7 being acidic. Our body maintains its blood pH at 7.4 at the sacrifice of our bones, our muscles, right? At, our, at the sacrifice of, it's going to maintain mineral balance and uh, electrolyte balance and sacrifice of our structure. How else would it maintain it? If we're not fueling our body with the appropriate nutrients, then we will struggle. And if our lifestyle is overstressed, then we will struggle. Hence the diseases of aging. Hence why many people age worse than others. So there certainly is an epigenetic component to it. Our blood pH doesn't change, but our urine pH is a vital sign, just like our heart rate just like our blood pressure, you know? And our periods for women who are cycling. Yeah. Considered a fifth vital sign, which I absolutely love. I love that too. Yes. And then there's also the people who say that the keto diet for women is like the worst thing that you should do. You should stay away from it totally because it tanks your thyroid hormone, wrecks your adrenals, will cause adrenal quote fatigue. What do you think about that? Well, I say that you know, traditional keto is absolutely destructive. Keto green approach is not. We are designed for this. And so lots of dark leafy greens, plant-based foods combined with foods to help support hormone detoxification and digestion, as well as healthy keto foods like salmon and avocado and grass-fed beef and olive oil and nuts and seeds. All of those things are fabulous adjuncts to your diet and it is by design but the intermittent fasting that I build in for my new book coming out well everyone should read the hormone fix and I tell you that it is just my magnus opus and we've sold over 35,000 copies it's translated into half a dozen languages already and and hopefully even so many more the um um it, it's just information, I would say any patient, I would want them to know this information. I just think of my mother when I think about it, the sooner we can start preventing disease, the better. And also all the clients I've had with infertility issues and menstrual issues. I mean, you know, this is the information that helped my patients because Vivian, honestly, I used to do two to three surgeries per week, but when I implemented these approaches, I went to needing to do two to three major surgeries per year. That's the difference. That's the difference. When we heal our body, our body heals itself. And it's that, it's a, it's a good relationship to have with your body. 
And so my, in my Keto Green 16 book that's coming out, the approach that I've put in is a 16 hour intermittent fast. So I get everyone able to work up to a 16 hour intermittent fast with a healthy Keto Green foods and recipes and lifestyle plan that in just 16 days, what we've seen in clinical trials, we've been doing group medical visits in uh, North Florida, integrative medicine clinical practice near, Gaines, near the University of Florida in Gainesville, uh, Florida. And um, we've run six rounds of these group medical visits and checking weight and blood pressure and heart rate and waist measurements, as well as um, certain lab works. And what we've seen, and, and questionnaire inventories, what we've seen on average in 16 days is a 50% decrease in symptom scores in just 16 days with up to 90% decrease in symptom scores, an average of five to six pounds weight loss with up to a 15 pound weight loss in just 16 days. So we've seen tremendous results as well as decreasing diastolic blood pressure and decreasing resting heart rate. All symptoms of improved sympathetic and parasympathetic tone. So in other words, just huge improvements. And then on the laboratory analysis, what we've seen is an improvement in hemoglobin A1Cs. I've clinically seen in myself and others these improvements, as well as improvement in thyroid function. Whereas where the question is, does keto work for, sorry, there's my puppy in the background. Okay. <laughs> um, the thyroid, you know, how, um, as opposed to keto not working for the thyroid, the keto green approach absolutely does work for thyroid. I've had many clients with Hashimoto's do tremendously better. Then with the fasting, is that just to help with ketone production or are there other benefits with intermittent fasting? Definitely with ketone production, because getting into ketosis, especially as we're older, we're older is a muscle. It's taken me a long time to really get in faster and faster. Now I can get my body into ketosis when I bump out because I do believe in metabolic flexibility and, you know, feasting. I think feasting should be part of our life and our lifestyle. We should not deny ourselves from that, but again, everything in balance. And so with, um, the my keto green fasting, it is, um, it is, the intermittent fasting to increase insulin sensitivity and no more snacking again to increase insulin sensitivity. I do not approve of the, you know, like you hear 16, eight eating windows. We have a 16, eight eating window, but you're eating only two or three times during that eight hours versus eating all throughout those eight hours, which I've had many clients erroneously do. And once we just shift, not just changing what they're eating or how much they're eating, but the timing with what they're eating, that makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, and there's people who say that they'll do this, this fasting for um, 16 hours and then they eat from 4 p.m. to like 10 p.m. And they're eating at the, like, exactly the wrong times. So their body's not ready to get those nutrients in right before they go to bed. So I think the timings during the day and when you're having your meals, the foods that you're eating as well is just as important in my opinion. And even the benefits with autophagy or autophagy, there's a ton of research, isn't there, with the prolon, um, the prolon, is it like package, the food package, that they're yeah, doing, fasting, fasting, mimicking, fasting mimicking diet, diet. yeah, um, it, with benefits to cancer, reducing breast cancer, reoccurrence in women who fast um, above 14 hours, so it really is amazing, I think the research is just going to keep coming. I agree. I agree. It is amazing. And we're and the whole concept of autophagy and I do regularly extended fasting, but on a regular basis, a 16 hour fast and understanding too, you know, what, what, you know, again, having the flexibility, like my daughter came home and we're having, uh, she came home from call. I had to bring her home from Holland a few weeks ago because of all of this going on. And she was studying in Holland. And, you know, I joke, oh my gosh, you have to adjust your life, right? She was studying in Holland for her junior year of college, however, in Nijmegen, and however, she was traveling so much. I'm like, how are you keeping up with your studies? She goes, mom, well, they're online. And I'm like, well, then you can study from home. Mm -hmm. Lo and behold, now she is actually studying from home. <laughs> <laughs> and then a few symptoms that I do want to make sure we cover because a lot of women um, they've probably heard us now mention some of these things they're like i need more solutions like tell me what else i can do for my vaginal dryness for example so let's start with that one uh, what are some of the causes that you see 
um, resulting in vaginal dryness and your top recommendations for the women dealing with this issue? Uh, definitely with vaginal dryness, is, uh, this is a situation, honestly, Vivian, I consider our prime real estate in our body, the clitoris to anus, because as we get older, symptoms that are associated with these areas are devastating. So from urinary incontinence, fecal incontinence, hemorrhoids, prolapse, pelvic discomfort, loss of intimacy, sex, sexual desire, all part of the same etiology, meaning that uh, structurally, as we get older, we're losing these reproductive hormones, just like our bones are going to get weaker as we get older, um, if they're not fed appropriately and, and worked out appropriately, et cetera, if we're not continuing to put strain and, and nourish them. But in general, they're just going to get weaker as we get older. Our um, pelvic area will too. And as a gynecologist, I've worked with women and it is devastating when things have gone on too long. And we can, in so many ways, restore healthy pelvic floor. So vaginal dryness, which also can cause you know, increased uh, infections, um, issues with structure, like I mentioned, prolapse, but your recurrent urinary tract infections um, is a really, and incontinence are really big problems that create quality of life issues because an important fact for us to realize, and we may not think about it in our 30s, but listen, I've had four kids. I've had four vaginal births, big kids, and I was experiencing incontinence in exercise in my early 40s. And so that was just eye-opening to me. I'm like, oh, I can't live this way. And I certainly, as a, as a surgeon, I've done many pelvic surgical procedures. And um, you know, when, how do we want to get great outcome? We use vaginal hormones to get great outcome beyond estrogen. So in this concept of vaginal dryness, many people are, used, are told, well, okay, here's some vaginal estrogen but estrogen only works on the mucosal layer. When we use androgens such as DHEA or testosterone, these work on the deeper tissue layers. So it helps with our body's ability to restore its natural moisture, as well as with when we use it with pelvic floor exercises, we get an improvement in function and orgasm and the sensation of pleasure, as well as in continents. We become more continent. We strengthen the pelvic muscles because we're giving them nourishment. We're giving the muscles and the fascia and the tissue nourishment. So we actually, my clients told me, I remember I started using vaginal hormone therapy in, in my clients as well as myself. And um, I started using it in patients I had that I was planning on operating on for incontinence because I wanted better results. And our tissue naturally thins out and we lose muscle as we get older, right? That's happening other places. Don't expect it not to happen in our vaginal area, but it is. And so as a surgeon, I wanted to get better results, have good tissue to operate on. And I started using, getting really more skilled at using vaginal hormone therapy and topical hormone therapy. As I diagnosed a woman, did her bladder studies, diagnosed her with incontinence, scheduled her for surgery, but I used vaginal hormones to prepare her before surgery. And uh, patients would come in for their pre-op a couple days before surgery. And they're like, Dr. Hannah, I haven't had any more incontinence issues. And I was like, man, you know, that is good. I, I don't need to operate. They're like, you mean I don't need the surgery now? If you're not symptomatic, you don't need the surgery, right? So that's how I was reversing these disease processes. And so over time and with myself, I, I wanted to create something that was over the counter that all women could get and not have to, to rely on their physician to write a prescription because many are not comfortable with using compounding pharmacies and using customized hormone prescriptions that aren't your standard pharmaceutical option, like we only, which we only have is estrogen right now. And now we have prasterone, DHEA, vaginal suppositories, and have been following this research for a decade. So, um, so I created Jolva, which is my anti-aging cream for the vulva. It's Jolva and J-U-L-V-A. And if you just read on my website, there's over a thousand testimonials that are just heartwarming testimonials. I can't believe it. 
And um, so with Jolva, it has DHEA, plant stem cells from the Alpine Rose. It has emu oil, coconut oil, and shea butter. And it's great to use on a daily basis, as well as um, before and during intercourse to help with sensation and, and sensitivity and pleasure. So we've seen just reversal. When one of my patients said to me, she goes, Dr. Anna, my vagina's 20 again. And here she was a 56 year old woman. And it makes a difference in lifestyle. I'm going to give it one more example of this because I th always think it, it helps. I had a client working, you know, who was one of my clients long distance. So um, she was um, it, divorced for 20 years and uh, her kids had grown and were out of the house. And so she had started dating again. And uh, she met this, the love of her life. And she called me up one day. She goes, Dr. Anna, I have been having um, urinary tract infections, like recurrent urinary tract infections. My local doctor wants me to be on, I've been on three rounds of antibiotics. And now she wants me to be on daily dose of antibiotics. And I just wanted to get your second opinion. And I said, well, first of all, that's called honeymoonitis <laughs> because, you know, you're, you're in love and you're having sex often. And also as we get older, we lose those natural tissues. And then what happens is that we are more susceptible to urinary tract infection. So with intrusion of bacteria into the urethra, I said, first of all, do these three things, pee after you have sex increase your vitamin C to 2000 to 4000 I use a day and start using Jolva daily. And, and she called me up a couple months later. She goes, I haven't had another urinary tract infection. Our romantic life is better than ever. And in fact, now they've um, gotten engaged and they've moved in together. And, and that could have been a very different scenario at age 56. She could have stopped wanting to have intimacy and he would have too. It's more than that in life. Hold on. Absolutely. And I'd love that. And the last symptom that I want to deal with, because it is such a huge problem, and especially with everything that's going on in the world right now at the time of recording with the coronavirus, um, is mood issues, memory loss, anxiety, depression, those types of things. So obviously the um, brain benefits to the keto aspects and the alkaline foods will really help. And the stress management side of things as well is absolutely key. And most people are aware of that. Um, but what about herbal medicine? So are there any particular herbs that you like that can help with mood? Um, I know that you have a product um, that contains maca. So could you tell us a bit about maca powder and how that could help with um, brain function and also the hormone imbalances? Yes, yes. As part of my journey around the world, one of the places we stopped initially was in Peru. Um, my nurse was from Peru. She was a nurse midwife in Peru. And um, she invited us to stay with her family. And everywhere we went in Peru, they would say, well, if you're infertile, you know, drink maca. And this is some of the physician, her physician family members. If you're infertile, drink maca. And if you're tired, drink maca. If your child's not thriving, give them maca. And um, then they would elbow my husband at the time. And they say, you know, it's the Peruvian Viagra. So of <laughs> course we're drinking some maca, right? We're like, okay. So um, I also had, as a scientist, understand why. What is causing, what, why is maca so special? And it really is special. It has legends around maca that says the Incan warriors used to drink maca before they went into battle. And in a, from a composition standpoint, maca is rich in, in these special proteins called macaines and also in arginine. So arginine increases nitric oxide, which is exactly how... Viagra works to increase blood flow, blood flow in the penis, blood flow in our body. It's a, a good heart med. Many people don't realize that Viagra was initially on trial as a heart medicine because it improved blood flow and the side effect was erections, which no one was complaining about. And so that's how it then got marketed into a, a um, erectile dysfunction drug. <laughs> so maca, I couldn't stand the taste of maca though, Vivian, to be honest. I had to um, start combining it with other foods. And so I learned about cat's claw herb, uno de gado from Peru. I learned about, you know, I started incorporating other foods as I traveled around the world, turmeric and greens and acerola and 
you know, so some citrus and other green antioxidant blends. I just kind of just discovered different superfoods from around the world and combined them with other scientifically known ingredients. And so that's how my, my formula, Mighty Maca Plus, was born. And I really do attribute that. Maca is such an adaptogenic herb and a root and it has been shown in research to improve sexual dysfunction in women and to decrease the discomfort of menopausal symptoms, to improve with symptom scores alone, as well as improve you know, blood sugar. And it's this adrenal adaptogenic um, root that really has such a great capacity. So with adaptogenic, especially now for our adrenals, we really need adrenal support. So whether we're in overdrive or completely flatlined with our adrenals, maca can come in and help. Now, because I never use straight maca because I couldn't stand the taste of it, and that's why I created Mighty Maca Plus, and we've used it clinically in clinical trials, and we've seen an increase in DHEA, so the adrenal hormone DHEA, naturally, as much as 70% in two months. And that's huge movement. That's a huge movement of the needle. And also in Mighty Maca Plus, we've seen improvements in blood pressure, as well as improvements in blood sugar. What about people who have high DHEA, so women with PCOS, for example? Is it um, going to help to regulate that because it is an adaptogen? So it'll help to boost DHEA in the women who have low DHEA, but bring it down back into normal range for those with PCOS and kind of androgen dominant conditions? I've used Mighty Maca Plus in many, many women with PCOS, also for fertility reasons. And its adaptogenic ability does just that. Plus the formulation that I put together is detoxifying. So for me, it was this combination of things that helped me restore my body and my fertility. And that's what I brought to my patients. And that's where I just started hearing story after story. But certainly in my cancer patients, in my infertile patients, in my patients with hot flashes, we have so many clients that say within two weeks, their hot flashes stopped with Mighty Maca. So it's this blend. Again, there, you know, there are over 30 superfoods in it. So if someone has a sensitivity to one of those superfoods, you know, then, then um, don't, don't drink it. But for many people, I would say, you know, I mean, I, nearly 99.9% .9 of people have tremendous success and it's gluten-free, dairy-free uh, combination that has worked really, really well in so many clients because of the combination of superfoods that work together. So even like we have quercetin in there, which we know is, is supportive in our, for our immune system. I have cat's claw herb, which is a potent um, uh, fight, a supporter of your natural immune response and anti-inflammatory response. And also oat beta glucan, another potent immunostimulant. So great, in combination of ingredients that work together. And because turmeric, quercetin, and resveratrol, all in Mighty Maca Plus, are, have genetic adaptogenic profiles, are also adaptogenic, I think the combination is what really, really is what we've seen has made a, has made a big difference. So I always say a disclaimer, I've never been able to use straight maca. And if I can't use it, I don't recommend it to my clients just straight. But I have many clients that use maca in their smoothies. And there's just so much good research for, for straight maca that um, I think it's a fabulous perimenopausal addition Agreed. And I think it's the benefits to blood flow and nitric oxide and hormones and adrenal health that it makes it so effective for things like anxiety and depression and low mood. Um, it's going to help with that progesterone level as well and just balance you out whatever's needed. So I agree that MAC is amazing and these herbs do have a synergistic effect. So rather than just isolating one compound that pharmaceutical med medicines tend to do, we want to look at the herb as a whole and work with other plants how nature really designed it to work and before yeah. we finish up i want to ask you a few more questions about how you stay healthy because i want to be as productive and successful and look as young as you do when i'm um, a mother of four and um, oh, so <laughs> the first one with a 12 year old oh i have to keep my hormones in check absolutely so what's one thing that you do every day to stay in hormonal harmony Definitely a green drink every day. 
always do a green drink. I start the morning off with my Mighty Maca elixir, a couple shots, a couple scoops of Mighty Maca with water. And sometimes I'll add apple cider vinegar, Bragg's apple cider vinegar, or the unfiltered apple cider vinegar to aid with digestion and detoxification first thing in the morning. And I also intermittent fast. Great. What's something that you're into lately? So it could be health related, could be completely random. Really, it's, um, gosh, right now, thinking just how life has turned upside down. It's really been cooking with my daughters in the kitchen now that they're all home. Yeah, it's the little things, isn't it? We're, mm-hmm. We've been waiting for a time to slow down. And I think there is some good potentially that could come out of this situation. And um, I tend to see that people I've been speaking to either absolutely hate it, like being in isolation, the um, I was may have been cut with the job and then there's people who are like, finally, I don't have to commute an hour each way and sit in an office with people that I hate. So it's good if we can find some positives out of this situation. So I love that. And then third question is, where can people find more from you online? Tell us a bit about your podcast and where we can find your products as well. Yeah, thank you. I'm the, I have my the Girlfriend Doctor podcast. So uh, anywhere you listen to podcasts, and that's been fun. I've been doing that for quite a while. And we just rebranded to The Girlfriend Doctor from my Couch Talk podcast. So it's a great place for intimate conversation, shamelessly and guiltlessly. And we just have a lot of fun there. And also my website is dranna.com. So Drana, D-R-A-N-N-A, dot com and um yeah my books are available anywhere books are sold thank you so much dr anna for your time this has been really great thank you thanks for having me